Hey good people, Batavia here. So we're going to do a before and after for the front yard garden. Okie doke, so quick housekeeping items. Thank you to those who like, watch, comment, share, and subscribe to Be Better Garden. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. And if you do, there's a notification bell you can hit. You'll be alerted each time I share more hashtag garden joy. All right, so we're going to do two things today. We're going to start the first few minutes of the video with where we were in April of 2022. I'll start off by walking through and showing what the plans were for the space. Then we'll move into current day where we'll actually do a traditional garden tour. So if you're interested in seeing only the traditional garden tour, I'll drop a timestamp in. You could skip ahead to that. All right, let's dig in. Okie doke, so the front yard is absolutely under construction and I'm trying to get my act together because I just don't like it to look this way, um, but work needs to be done. So first up I have number one, this longer narrow raised bed now. So last year I had uh, sunflowers growing up here and this was an eight foot by one foot bed. I used landscape timbers that I'm walking on now. And this year I just basically added two more to increase the length. So now you can see where I connected them basically with what I had. But anywho, now it's 16 feet. And I had plans on planting something special up here. Um, but I found another space for that. Which means I can use this for flowers. Which makes me the happiest. And the second project, and this is actually the only thing I had planned on doing up here. It was creating these two narrow beds, taking advantage of the space. So this is like eight feet based on the landscape timber by like a foot and a half. And so my intention has changed as far as what I wanna do with this space. But now I think I'm just going to dig up the space, get it prepped. And then since we're kind of getting into spring, I'm gonna use this for my vining crops for summer. So my melons, maybe my cucumbers, maybe beans. Um, and I'm just gonna let them grow up the trellis on the outside. And one of the benefits is I've been struggling with what to plant here because it would be very shady based on what I grow on the trellis if I grew it in the beds like I normally do. Um, but this will ultimately clear the space for me to be able to plant some other things namely some of my um, brassicas, some of my broccoli, cauliflower, things like that, and I'll be able to cover them. At least that's the plan in my head now. Um, so by the time these things finish out, I'll have these things really taking off. Uh, so that's second project. Third and final is what I'm doing here. And this is probably the most work. This is building out an asparagus bed yeah a whole asparagus patch so i'm super excited about this i have been turning over in my head where to put asparagus for years i really like to move things around as you can see and it's difficult to make a space for something that's that many years in the making you know so what is the word some people say 20 years some people say 10 to 15 years but either way i am very happy that i'm going to use this space i'll pull up these um round beds the fire pits i'll rehome those i'll figure that out but i basically i'm going to use more landscape timbers and i'm going to go eight foot across and i haven't decided how far out i'm going to come so i already have some wood that's cut so it may be just two and a half feet but i i'm also thinking that maybe i'll just use one of the landscape timbers cut it in half and make it more like a four foot by eight foot bed so so yeah that is the plan i'll bring y'all back around once things get a little bit more in order and uh, you can take a look because we're gonna start planting pretty soon yeah all right I'll see y'all in a few welcome to the front yard garden June 2022 we are almost completely planted out um, spring crops are finishing up they got a late start but that's okay and summer crops are going in super excited uh, but let's dig into what we're actually growing. So first bed, tomato plant back here, Cherokee purple. This is one of two in the front yard garden. I have some sweet peas. I don't know if I've given the disclaimer, but my spring things were planted pretty late. So I'm crossing my fingers. Some of them have done well, some of them not so much. But here we are. 
I have chard here, Swiss chard, peppermint variety, and I think I have a forward hook plant in there, which is one of my favorites. And that'll stay in there all season. Um, I have kind of the last few spinach plants that have bolted. But I think it's just a t an interesting view. And I've pulled a couple because once the leaves start to yellow, I'm not as interested in it. But my intention is to try to save the seeds, but we'll see if I'm satisfied with the way it looks and I may sacrifice the seeds for the actual aesthetic. Sometimes it's just like that. All right, so up here I have just sowed about five or six days ago uh, butternut squash. So waiting for that to pop up. The next set of beds, if you saw the first bit of the video, so I did plant out gladiolus. There's some sunflowers and then I did a couple of flower or lettuce bowls over there. We'll see it when we go around the other side. So these containers are about a duplicate of each, each other. So I have four hook chards, some lettuce, a couple of onions. Um, I just did some sweet onions through onion sets. And these size containers, I also have a pepper plant in here. Um, so both of these are set up the same way. Uh, so that's kind of the beginning of the containers in the front yard garden. And then this bed here, it's a little bit different. It still has peppers, which I've done traditionally in this space. Um, but we tucked in some lettuce, which will be coming out pretty soon. But makes such a pretty view. And if I would have planted a little bit earlier, these would have formed heads. Um, but we live and we learn. <laughs> we have more celery here. And then we have sweet peppers. This is one of those peppers that I always forget to pronounce the name correctly, so I'll put it on screen. There's another Cherokee purple tomato, some romaine lettuce that I moved from one bed into this space. A couple of marigolds popped in there. The next set of peppers are white bell peppers, so these two here. Then we have chocolate beauty bell peppers, so all sweet peppers. Uh, we have, let's see, a yellow bell pepper, one, two plants, and then we have California Wonder, so your traditional red, ultimately it'll get red if you let it. Um, so the thing I did in this bed that's different from a planting standpoint is I went with two plants versus what I've done, kind of basically three pepper plants. So we'll see how they do, especially with some of these bell peppers, which get a little bit larger. So hoping that that works out well. This is a brand new kind of idea this is how i repurposed the um fire pits that were closer to the the back of the front yard garden so i'm doing potatoes and corn in here and the corn is coming up slowly and so i re-sowed on this side because i was intending to have corn in this entire kind of circle i kind of made this set up with the idea of once these potatoes grow up and I continue to add soil, I continue to mound them. At some point, they'll be level. And my intention was to remove this, but now I'm not sure. I, may, I just may let it kind of roll out. The goal would be not to disturb the corn, so we'll see how that goes. But the potatoes are doing well. Uh, these are, for this early state I should say, these are primarily purple Viking potatoes, which is what I planted this year. Then I have a couple of store-bought red potatoes that had sprouted and I put in. So that is this first bed. Over here, I have more romaine lettuce. All of this romaine, they're volunteers. I have one radish that volunteered. I am convinced I'm gonna let that go to seed. And then I'm giving strawberries another go. So I have some strawberries tucked in here. And I have about seven more plants that I'm trying to figure out where to put. So the nice thing about this space once the strawberries start to produce, I'll be able to create some makeshift covering that will still allow pollinators in, but I shouldn't have to worry about things like birds and, and other things kind of eating at the strawberries. That's the goal. So these round beds, let's come back to. In <laughs> um, this side here, so two 20 gallon grow bags. One has a pineapple cherry like a ground cherry plant this is my first time growing it and i'm not sure what to make of it so far it's just been the slowest thing more of that romaine lettuce i think i'm gonna put sweet potato slips in here not sure yet these are those two new beds from the front part of the video 
And so I'm excited to do two things in this space. One, I got some spring things in. Let's see if I can, I'll take this off so we can get a close look. So now I know this concept works, right? So I have this narrow space. I used, it's not PVC, but PEX pipes, which I had never heard of, but they're a little bit more flexible when they're thinner. So that worked out really well. Um, and then I have this netting here. The Green Wave Mustards have done really well, even though they were planted pretty late in the spring. They have very little damage, which I attribute to the netting. Um, which has worked out well. And then I have direct sowed cucumbers here. So that's uh, sweet gherkin and then straight eight back there. And then we have a honeydew melon. Uh, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's. This is this is good stuff. All right, that's what I got. <laughs> yeah, I'm like literally like teary eyed. I know I can't help myself. Super good. All right. I have a couple of honeydew melon seeds that I sow, and the intention is by the time those melons and cucumbers come up, I'll have this space clear from these plants. Mustards. These are tender green mustards, which did beautifully last fall, but they've bolted this spring. But it's so pretty, I think. Um, and then I have just some lettuce heads, some calendula. This is an example of the ornamental now lettuce. This is one of my favorites. It's um, Marvel uh, red lettuce. I'll put the full name on screen. Um, but these outer leaves will still be okay to eat and I'll probably leave this in place. I haven't quite gotten to my flowers, my annual flowers this year. So I'll be subbing in some flowers for the lettuce that pull up. Same thing over here, some romaine lettuce, and then I think it's red sails, um, which has been a real star just from the beauty standpoint and taste. So on this side, same idea. In the far corner is an asparagus crown. Hasn't popped up yet. A bunch of the tender green that's uh, bolted. Then I have some lettuce heads that have gone in. So I really like the idea of using this space for kind of spring plantings, then putting in summer plants that'll climb the trellis, and then ideally coming back in the fall and planting some cool weather things. I have one lonely tomato here that uh, doesn't look great. It's a boxcar willy. So my tomatoes I started from seed. Some of them were beautiful, some of them not so much. But I wanted to put this here because my idea is one of the things when you gift veggies from your garden, especially tomatoes, the big ask is for green tomatoes. So I'm putting it up front. It's not going to be covered, but I'm thinking I'll harvest most of those tomatoes as green. We may leave some as red just to see if they're bothered by the animals. Because I'd love to be able to grow some tomatoes kind of in future years up here. And then I have direct sowed uh, more melons. So the favorite from a couple of years ago, mango melon. Mango melon, let's see. Mm. That's good, yeah. And then I'm giving watermelon a try. This is Sugar Baby, I'm giving it a try again. Haven't had the best luck with it when it comes to delicious melons, but we're gonna give it another go. Uh, this bed here, and we're rounding out now has kind of the spring brassicas and then we've started to sow some seeds for summer things so same story here i'll take off this netting which is just basically secured with these spring clamps which have been my favorite but i've had a hard time finding them and then these new clips that i found someone on instagram shared they were using them so i got these from amazon and they come in a couple of different sizes so jury's still out on how effective these will be kind of in the more long term um, but the spring clumps are definitely a winner i leave them out all season so there's a bunch of rust but they still do the job okay so this bed is a mixture of cool weather crops that will come out cool weather crops that will stay in throughout the season and then some summer things so i have here okra that i direct sowed about a week ago same thing here so the netting will come off of this section by the time that okra gets big 
Then I have broccoli, which will be more than done by then. Um, so there are three plants and they are forming heads, which I'm excited about. I think the rule of thumb is you want to harvest it when the broccoli is still kind of firm, meaning like the, the heads are closed. And when they start to separate like this, it's a sign that it's getting close to bolting. Um, I'm going to keep a close eye on these and we're going to take it day by day, see if it gets a little bit more size. Um, and if I see it stopped growing, then I'll go ahead and harvest the heads. The cauliflower here, good morning. The cauliflower here, I haven't seen any signs of a head forming yet. So not sure about what's happening there. I have like one um, beet that germinated. I sowed a bunch of seeds earlier this spring, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> and then in between here, I sowed uh, some squash. And so again, these plants will be ultimately removed when these summer things start to grow. And the intention would be to not have a netting on this section of this bed. Um, one thing I noticed about the peck, PEX um, pipes, they are definitely more flexible. So they don't have as much firmness as the PVC. And so they do kind of sway with whatever material you have on them. So I guess that could be a gift and, you know, maybe a curse. But for now, I'm okay with it. This bed will continue to be covered. And what we have going on here is a sunflower, which will pull because we'll have cover on this. And so we have some kale. So one, two kale plants, three kale plants. And then we have uh, Brussels sprouts, which we're trying for the first time this year. And so I want to keep a close eye. Some of the damage I think is based on um, Roly polies, pill bugs, and um, so I'm keeping an eye on that. But as these plants get bigger and stronger, I should be okay. We have some volunteer cilantro that's bolted, um, and this is another view of those salad bowls. Uh, I do also have some kale kind of tucked in these corners, trying to take advantage of the space. But yeah, super pleased with this space. Super pleased with growing brassicas up front. I strayed away from it because I just didn't want the clunkiness of like covers, which is my preference in protecting these vegetables. So, so far so good. The black netting really is kind of unnoticeable compared to the tool fabric. So this bed, these are the last three in the front yard garden. We have eggplant, pepper plant, <laughs> couple of onions. I changed my mind about this kind of makeshift trellis that I created. So I love to repurpose some things. So this is moved. This is like the third space this spring. And so I actually had it on this end, which I just, it didn't seem as functional as I move around the yard. So I still have a couple of uh, cucumber plants. I sowed those seeds and I changed my mind. And so here are more cucumber plants that I intend on training up this trellis. And then I should have a couple of beans that I sowed down here. But pleased with this, this is more corn, trying it in a grow bag, 20 gallon grow bag here. I have a, a fellow gardener who's in Texas that's grown corn successfully in 10 gallon grow bags. So I know it can happen. <laughs> Over here is where I'm gonna dedicate space to beans and sweet potatoes. I'm hardening off my sweet potato slips so I haven't um, had a chance to plant those out yet, but these are Kentucky Wonder beans um, that we will try to trellis up the teepee. Lastly, and the most exciting thing about the front yard garden so far, and I'll put some shots on when they really look like asparagus. This is the asparagus bed, right? So got this built out, and I use that loosely because it really was just connecting these landscape timbers. Um, but just under a month, we saw the first spears, and I think I'm going to just drop some zinnia seeds to maybe add some color to this space. This is just year one for these, so I know I have a weight in front of me, but that's okay. Um, but super pleased that it looks like most of the crowns have sprouted, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, so we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Um, as they progress and kind of fern out throughout the season. 
Thanks for spending some time with me. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below, and I shall see you all in the next one.